Hi everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 9.3.3 HSRP Configuration Guide. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Cisco Networking Academy Version 7 curriculum. Now in this particular lab we have a trio or triangle of routers here um, so that creates some redundancy in our network so when traffic leaves this LAN number one remember every interface off of a router either creates a WAN or a LAN right here we've created LAN one uh, off of R1 here and that's R1's interface is G00 uh, I believe here G01 excuse me and that is 192.168.1.1 and it is connected to S1 and it is also here in uh, PCA is in that LAN. The other LAN is over here connected off of R3 and R3's interface is G00 I believe it is and that includes R3, S3 and PCB. This is a so totally separate LAN. Its interface on R3 is uh, 192.168.1.3. So technically, these are two separate LANs, but the addressing does uh, kind of overlap in the same subnet. Now, we do have here S1 and S3 that, that are connected for some redundancy here. So um, it seems like if you were to send something from PCB to S3, right? And then it could have an option to either go to uh, R3 or S1. Right now, that's actually not true because remember, PCB is going to try to contact its default gateway no matter what. Its default gateway right, way right now is this interface on R3. PCA's uh, default gateway is this interface right here on R1. All right, so traffic from PCA should go to S1 and up to R1 traffic from PCB could go over to S3 and up to R3. Now, let's look at a trace route. So we'll go to PCA first, go to command prompt, and we'll type tracert. That basically does a trace route. And we want to go to the web server. So 209.165.200.226. So what this is doing is it's seeing a little bit more than just a ping. A ping will tell you if the packet made it there and back, this will tell you what addresses were along the way. So you can kind of see what path it took. Now, if you don't really know all the stuff in between you and the uh, the destination that you're sending it to, this may not really um, give you a lot of beneficial information. Also, because of public private addresses, um, some of that end to end tracing is actually lost in real world over the Internet situations. But for this lab, we do want to look at the trace route for what path the traffic is traveling. So <clears throat> it looks like it left PCA and went to 192.168.1.1, which is, again, this interface right here on R1. Then it goes up uh, to 10.1.1.2. If we look at our address and chart, 10.1.1.2 is R2's G00. So that's right here. OK, so it's again, we've got from PCA to switch one. Switch one doesn't have an IP address. So trace routes only look at the um, network hops. So PCA to switch one is not a hop. All right. That's just, you know, again, it's layer two. Uh, layer three is a hop here to R1. So that's 192.168.1.1. Goes up to R2, which is 10.1.1.2. It goes over to the Internet. That's 10.100.100.2. And we see that in our addressing chart as well. And that's right here. INET G01 is 10.100.100.2. So that's this incoming interface right here. Um, and then it goes over to finally the web server. So from PCA to the web server, it went from PCA to switch one, switch one to R1, R1 to R2, R2 to this entry um, port on the internet cloud servers, and then over to web server. Okay. Now, let's look at the same thing from PCB. 
So we'll do a tracer 209.165.200.226. One thing to also say about this is make sure you either click the fast forward button in the lab a couple times before you try this because you do need network convergence from end to end, or you may have to run the tracer command a couple times for it to fully go um, from end to end. All right, so here, Again, you see it contacts its default gateway first. The first thing in a trace route or a tracer command that you'll notice is that it always finds the default gateway first. So the traffic left PCB and went to S3. S3 sent it up to R3. That's this interface right here, 192.168.1.3. R3 sends it up to R2. Then it goes to the same internet cloud here and then it goes finally over to the web server so pcb to s3 s3 to r3 r3 to r2 r2 to the internet cloud the internet cloud to web server so we have that trace uh, that path traced as well now um, that covers the first steps here now we want to observe the network traffic because we have a lot of redundancy here right so if this one of these paths goes down we still have alternate ways to get to our destination let's actually end or disconnect and again you want to make sure that you're not clicked on any devices because if you click this uh, delete if you're clicked on a device it'll try to get you to delete that so you want to make sure you're clicked off of it and we're actually going to delete or sever the cable between r3 and s3 which is this one right here so we're going to delete that one and then make sure you click back on the, again, the uh, dotted box here because you don't want to accidentally click on something else and delete it. So um, now that we've done that, we are going to re-execute the tracer command, all right, on PCB or from PCB. So we're going from PCB to the web server. Now, your initial thought might be, all right, all it's going to do is go from PCB to S3, S3 to S1, then up to R1 and so on. Now, you could say that, and that's what it sounds correct because, again, it does have this redundancy here. But what did we just mention? The PCs are always going to contact their default gateway first. If you imagine yourself in a room, um, let's say we were teaching this class face to face and we were in a room and um, I assigned somebody to by the door and said, hey, any students that want to leave this room have to contact the student by the door. That's the default gateway, right? Anybody that wants to or any packet that wants to leave a network has to contact the default gateway before it can leave that network. We just severed PCB's ability to contact R3 because it's trying to contact its default gateway. That default gateway port is no longer being used. These ports are being used on R3, but they are not 192.168.1.3. That interface is now gone, so it loses connectivity. Now, if you set the default gateway as something else, then connectivity would be restored. However, that's what we want to accomplish with HSRP. We want to set a backup default gateway so that traffic can be re, uh, diverted to a different path no matter what. So that way, if the link between R1 and S1 goes down, PCA can still have connectivity. If the link between R3 and S3 goes down, PCB can have connectivity and R1 could become the backup default gateway or R3 could become the backup default gateway. So let's actually configure that. Oh, let's actually add this back first. So we click on a copper straight through cable, click on R3, G00, S3, S3 G02. So now that we have that back connected and all our link lights are green, uh, we have full end-to-end -end connectivity from everywhere once again. So now let's configure HSRP. So on R1, and we're going to do these commands on R1 and R3, and the interfaces we want to configure on R1 and R3 in a minute are going to be the ones that are serving as the default gateway for their respective local area networks, which is G01 on R1 and R3 is going to be G00. So on R1, we are going to enable config T and we're going to go to interface G01. All right. And we are going to set the standby version of two. The reason we're going to change the standby version two to two is because standby version one only supports IP version four. Standby version two supports IP version four and IP version six. That is pretty much a necessity in today's networking as 
in the Aaron, uh, American Registry for Internet Numbers, all IP version 4 addresses have been depleted, given out to you know ISPs and everything. So most networks are running IP version 4 and IP version 6 or dual stack networking at the same time. So we want to change that first to standby version 2. And you'll notice here they tell you that command, standby version 2. And the next thing we want to do is actually set the standby address. The standby default gateway is, in a sense, a virtual uh, address, but it is a real address in that networking range. So you remember our networking range is 192.168.1.0 through 192.168.1.255. That makes our usables 192.168.1.1 through 192.168.1.254. We're going to use the last address in that as the backup default gateway for both routers. So it's kind of like a virtual one that both routers will actually share. And whichever one is available in the um, active one, there's an active and a standby, whichever one is the active one, it'll go to automatically. And we're actually going to change all our devices to share that new default gateway address. So we're going to do standby. <clears throat> And we need a number, so we put one here, it's the group number, IP, and then we put the new IP address. We still leave the physical IP address up there, which was 1.1 .1 for this interface, but this is going to be our new standby interface. Now, we're going to change the priority number. And the higher that priority number means that it will actually become the default uh, active router. So the higher it is, by default, it is at 100. So we want to make sure to change that standby one priority 150. And then we want to do standby one preempt. We want to change the priority on R1 so that it becomes the active router once we get R1 and R3 configured. R3 will be the backup. Then R1, we do the preempt command because if anything happens where R3 has to take over as the active router, if R1 were to go down, then whenever R1 comes back up, we want to do the preempt so it will become the active router again. Okay, so we have that configured. Now we do have to use the same group ID on R3 and we want to use the same address. OK, again, the physical address for the physical port is still there, but this is the backup IP address that we're using and it should be unique, but shared by both routers. OK, so we'll do interface G00 this time. Again, that is the physical interface on R3 is G00. OK, and then we're going to do standby version 2. And then standby IP. I'm sorry, we need the one there, right? We need to share that group number. Standby one IP 192.168.1.254. So again, same address shared by both. And we're actually going to change the default gateway for everything in both networks to be that address. And it's just going to choose. So it's kind of like giving both R1 and R3 the same name and saying, R1, you're going to answer to that name until you were, something were to happen to you. And if anything were to happen to you, then R3, you're going to answer at that point. OK, so again, you see here it changed to standby for R3. It's in standby. And you notice over here, R1 is an active. You can do a do show standby to see what the status is as well. So you see it says G00 is configured in group one version two, but it's in state standby. And it tells you who the active router is. It's actually 192.168.1.1. So it is still um, important that you leave that physical interfaces IP address there. And you see here the priority is 100. So that's why it has a lower priority than R1. R1, we changed the priority to 150. So now R1 is kind of like, again, the priority one, the boss. It will take, uh, be the active router first, right? It'll be the one in charge until it goes down. And then R3 will be the standby.
If we do a do show standby over here, again, it shows that G01 was the physical interface. It's in group one version two, but it's in active mode. And it shows the standby router is the other one, which is R3's physical interface. It shows my priority is 150. And it says the active router is local, which means it's R1. And it shows that preemption is enabled. Now, now that we have that configured, for this to work properly, we need to go change the default gateway. So we need to change it to that 192.168.1.254 address for all devices. Right now, PCA's default gateway was just this physical interface on R1. Now we want to change it to 1.254, which again was the um, new uh, HSRP address. And we want to do that for PCA, for PCB. We want to do that for S1. And that command is IP default dash gateway 192.168.1.254. And for S3. IP default dash gateway 192.168.254. And that should get you to 100%. Now, let's look at the actual trace route again. So let's go to PCB, and I'm going to do a new trace route. So a tracer to 209.165.200.226. All right, now you notice that it says PCB here its first stop was not R3 anymore. Before it went from PCB to R3. That is not the case anymore. It went from PCB to R1 because R1 is the new active router. And again, we changed the default gateways to 192.168.1.254. So that's kind of like the acting IP address for both R3 and R1's default gateway interfaces. But again, we are allowing R1 to take the lead on answering that call as the default gateway until something were to happen. So if we cause that something to happen by deleting the link between R1 and S1, so now we've deleted that link, let's see the path now if we redo the tracer command To the web server. Now you notice it goes to R3, 192.168.1.3 first. And same thing, if we go to PCA and redo that tracer command, it is going to R3 as well, predictably. 192.168.1.254. 